Welcome to the Dog Pound, everybody. Back with another video. Today we're talking home gym stuff again. This is a video about things you should and shouldn't go cheap on in your home gym. As a home gym owner, you're trying to save money, right? You're trying to not spend your whole life savings, break the bank. There's some things, though, you need to spend some money on to have a quality and effective home gym. Of course, I've bought it all. I have been through cheap stuff, expensive stuff, return stuff, threw stuff away, DIY stuff. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about things you can totally go cheap on if you're making a home gym and things you probably shouldn't. Let's get started. We're going to start with things you shouldn't go cheap on. So go ahead and get out the checkbook or the black credit card or whatever you're going to use for these items. Number one is going to be your weight rack. I've said this before in a video, I believe last video I mentioned, my first weight rack ever was two 55 gallon oil drums that I put there, put the concrete weight set onto, and then I was able to lift the barbell kind of off of those 55 gallon oil drums and do squats off of that. Um, not ideal. And then I was able to get kind of a cheap rack at a store called Play It Again Sports, a used sporting goods store, use that for a little bit. When I moved away from home um, as you know, an, an adult or whatever, I got a cheap like Gold's Gym bench and rack set on Facebook Marketplace. Didn't use that for too long because it was so wobbly. Eventually bought this Titan Fitness short squat stand, which in terms of racks is actually pretty cheap because I didn't go for a full power rack because I have pull-up bars and other stuff elsewhere. I mean, it's as cheap as you can get for a quality built rack. If somebody is making a home gym, the rack is your cornerstone, right? Your gym's based around your rack. I've probably spent at least a couple hundred dollars of ways to make even this rack better when I could have just spent it on a more expensive rack. You don't want your rack giving out. You don't want safety issues. Spend the money on a quality rack, something from Bells of Steel, Rogue Fitness, Titan Fitness, a quality brand that's going to be sturdy and can hold a lot more weight than you're going to use for your heaviest lifts. Number two on things you shouldn't go cheap on is going to be specialty bars. Things like safety squat bar. I have a trap bar. I have a uh, Swiss bar, multi-grip bar, easy curl bar, dumbbell handles. I did DIY an axle bar, but besides from that, specialty bars are going to be your best friend as a home gym owner because you're able to do different variations of compound exercises that don't take up a lot of space um, just with a barbell difference. So things like a camber bar, uh, things like a safety squat bar, things like a multi-grip bar, you're able to do so many variations of movements just with those barbells. Again, you don't want safety issues. Um, I believe even though if you think this is kind of a lot of money for just another bar when I have a straight barbell, you're going to use especially barbell quite a bit and get a lot of use out of it if you're creative. So I recommend spending the money on a couple specialty barbells because that opens the doors for so many more variations. And we're talking about cornerstones of your home gym. Another cornerstone of my home gym is this cable setup. Something I wouldn't necessarily go cheap on. Again, I'm kind of a cheap person, I guess. I wanted to stay kind of in budget for this home gym. And uh, this was about $600, which is actually on the cheap side for a functional trainer cable station. Uh, but overall, I did spend a lot of money. It's probably the, one of the more expensive items in the home gym. It is kind of a cornerstone of where you do exercises, right? I do barbell lifts, dumbbell lifts over in the weight area. Over here, most of my movements, flies, curls, push downs, pull downs, everything's done here in this cable station just about. So I recommend spending the money on a good cable station. In fact, I would get a cable station maybe like second or third on your list of things you buy in your home gym. Get a rack, get some weights, and then get cables because you're able to do so many exercises with a pretty small footprint for what it is. Spend the money, you'll get better pulleys, cables, uh, customer support even, and uh, it's worth the money to have a good cable station in your gym in my opinion. Another thing, and I'm gonna sit on it right now, that I recommend spending the money on, which was Another mistake of mine when making my home gym is a quality bench. This is a Titan Fitness bench, about the cheapest bench you can find on Titan Fitness, and it still wasn't that cheap. It's only maybe five, six years old. And in this case, I've got a hole that I had to patch with duct tape. 
I've got this liner falling down right here, even having some issues with the holes on how they line up with the bench. It's pretty annoying. I just couldn't stomach, you know, paying $450 for a bench. And I kind of regret that. I feel like I could have used money I spent elsewhere on a super high quality bench and it would have been worth my money. I've gone through three other benches before this one that I bought trying to save money, ended up on this one and I've stayed here. Um, I would even like a better one sometime if I could. Uh, don't skimp out on a bench. Don't buy a cheap bench on Amazon or Walmart. Get a quality bench rated for a lot of weight with multiple adjustments. Titan Fitness has a new one that's pretty good. I think Bells of Steel has some pretty good benches. Um, you know, just be careful with the bench you get, read the reviews, watch some YouTube videos on bench reviews. It seems like a basic piece of equipment, but you're going to be sitting on the bench for so many things, adjusting it multiple times per workout. And it is a pain in the butt if it doesn't work like it should. The last thing is a little one that I recommend not cheaping out on. Don't be a cheaper on this one is a weightlifting belt. I got a couple belts. This one, kind of your classic one you'll find in any basket in any commercial gym. Not great for anything heavier than curls or something you just want a little more back support on. Um, this is the Inzer belt, it's a single prong lever or single prong, not a lever belt uh, uh, from Inzer. And that's, I wear that all the time. I've bought it once and I can use it for life. I think, you know, it's never going to uh, wear out. It's never going to break. I can trust it. And I recommend just spending the 70 to hundred dollars on a really good belt that you'll use forever. And um, unless you get super fat and can't fit it anymore or super skinny and can't fit it anymore, uh, you'll never have to buy another one. Get a quality belt. You'll use it for anything really heavy. And uh, it's just a good idea to get something quality if you're relying on it for bracing. Okay, now the fun stuff, in my opinion, we're going to get into the cheap items, the things you should just not spend that much money on, things that I maybe spent too much money on or got for cheap and was able to, you know, just kind of realize, yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these type of things. We're going to talk about five of those as well in this video. Number one, we're going to talk about might be a little bit controversial. And I mentioned this a little bit in the last video where I mentioned my 100 pound plates that I got from Walmart for about, you know, a dollar per pound or so. Pretty cheap weights are still going to weigh the same as pretty expensive weights in my opinion. Unless you are an Olympic lifter, you are a CrossFitter that needs good, high quality bumper plates, or you're working on a floor that has no protection. So you need bumper plates to bounce the barbell off of if you drop it. I recommend getting as cheap of weights as you possibly can. It's quite easy to restore weights. You can get the rust off of weights, but honestly, a little rust isn't going to kill you. A little rust is fine. I mean, look around my gym at my plate condition. These are all plates I've gotten used on Marketplace. Uh, the barbell has some rust on it over there. I got another barbell out in the garage that doesn't look much better. I mean, here's the plate that really shows my weight quality. I mean, look at that. It doesn't look pretty, but it still weighs 45 pounds for that plate. So not a very big deal uh, if your plates aren't perfect. I, like I said last video, advise people to kind of embrace the grunge of a home gym, get it a little bit dirty, throw some chalk around, don't keep it too pristine, or you won't want to do real work in it. If you want to get really good results, you have to put in some serious work. And I think even, you know, rusty old plates kind of promote that in a, in a sick way. So don't worry too much about getting the highest quality, most expensive weight set you can find on Rogue Fitness or something. Look for Facebook Marketplace deals. Find, you know, your cheap weights of people just giving them away. Piece together a good weight set with different uh, purchases. Even my dumbbells, I went fairly cheap. Uh, I do have adjustable dumbbells. They're these Titan Fitness Chrome ones. As far as weights go for dumbbells, that's a pretty cheap option, about as cheap as it gets to use plate loaded. I hardly ever wish I had a whole dumbbell rack in here just for space. I mean, I guess it'd be nice if I'm doing drop sets or something, but that's not that often anyways. So definitely don't spend too much money on your weights. Use that money on other stuff like your benches or your racks. I talked about the cable station and things you shouldn't cheap out on. However, things you could go fairly cheap on are the cable attachments. I see some crazy prices on cable attachments out there on Amazon, on different websites like Spud Inc and sites I love, but ones that charge a lot of money for things like mag grips and those special attachments. 
you're all doing the same movements. If you're doing a pull down, you're doing a pull down, whether or not you have a fancy grip on it or not. I mean, like this cable station came with a few different attachments like this pull down bar here, um, a V handle, things that I use all the time, even though they're the cheap versions, you can get a tricep rope on Amazon for 10, 15 bucks. These little grips here I use all the time for face pulls and stuff like that. Uh, these were, you know, 10 bucks. I got these, which I use all the time, these single D handles with a rotating handle on Amazon for, I think, 20 bucks for the pair. You don't have to spend a lot of money on your cable attachments. Just find a few that you like and, uh, you know, don't worry about getting super fancy handles that aren't going to give you much more than the cheap ones. The only stuff I would spend money on is if you're getting a lot more out of it than what the cheap version would give you. And speaking of that, things that don't give you necessarily much more for the expensive versions, this one's a little controversial and I might be making a generalization here because there's probably some machines I haven't tried, uh, but weight machines. I don't think you have to go crazy expensive on your weight machines. You shouldn't be looking at Arsenal Strength, Prime Fitness, all these companies that make very expensive weight equipment for your home gym, unless I guess you have the money and you want to spend it and get the best quality piece. Those are commercial products. You don't have to get that. Get machines that are kind of cheap knockoff versions, to be honest. I mean, I hate to say it, but uh, for example, I have three machines in my gym. I have leg extension, leg curl from Titan. I have a seated row from Society, and I have a chest press, incline press from Society. The Society machines are about $250, $300 a piece. It's double that price on Titan for those machines. I love the machines. It's a great bar path. I'm six feet tall. It's not a weird fit. Um, and I just think it'd be silly to spend two or three or four times the money for a similar movement uh, that you're not going to get way more out of it compared to the cheap version. The leg extension leg curl. I think about all the time that I bought that $500, $600 piece of equipment when there is a two or $300 version on all these websites like Society and GMWD and all these different kind of off-brand type machines. Um, like, would those be just as good? That's kind of my thought. And I don't know if I'm getting that much more out of the expensive version that I have. However, I will say as a caveat, something like a leg press, a hack squat, you might need to go a little more expensive because those are machines you more seriously load, more than a couple hundred pounds per side. Uh, you're going to be loading those a lot heavier. Depth matters a lot more in those. Uh, you're going to be able to be a little more, more picky in something like a leg press. So maybe I would spend the money there, but don't spend too much on machines. You don't even need machines, honestly, uh, which is kind of where it first comes in, is you're buying a luxury item anyways that you can do the same movements with barbells and dumbbells and lever arms and stuff. So you don't really need machines in your gym. So don't spend too much money on them. You'll barely use them anyways. We're going to take a little field trip to outside to the garage and also to our family room for the next portion of this video of the two more things that you could totally go cheap on. Number one is cardio equipment. This one's sitting up here upstairs in front of the TV, an old treadmill. This was free. You know, you can find old cardio equipment on Marketplace. People just want to give that stuff away. They don't really want it in their house. It turns into clothes hangers. Don't worry about buying a $1,000 treadmill or a rowing machine. If you're a CrossFitter and need a Concept 2, I guess that could be handy. But otherwise, you know, why are you spending tons of money on something you could get for 20 bucks or free uh, from Marketplace or Craigslist? Back here behind my truck, I do have uh, like a punching bag, which was 20 bucks on Marketplace a rowing machine, which was free on Marketplace. You don't have to spend a lot of money on cardio equipment. Plus, look at this, shoes. I could just go outside for cardio if I really wanted to. So don't spend too much money on all of that. The last thing is kind of a specialized thing. This might not pertain to you if your training style is different than mine. If you do dabble in strongman movements and conditioning, I don't really recommend spending a lot of money on strongman equipment um, because you can make so much of it by yourself. I'm gonna actually go outside here and show you another thing. A little bit cold out, so bear with me if I look like I'm in pain. Strongman equipment by nature is kind of meant to be rugged. It's kind of meant to be the thing that you're just hoisting 
logs and stones and whatever else. Yes, it does hold a lot of weight, so you got to be careful there, but feel free to DIY strongman equipment or just find stuff around on Marketplace or in the junkyard or whatever. I've DIY'd all of my strongman equipment except for one piece, uh, which I'll talk about. So the first one is I DIY'd this yoke. If you don't know how to weld and don't have access to metal, won't be able to do that necessarily, but this was all DIY'd. I think I spent about 50 to 100 bucks on metal for this. So it works. I mean, it holds. I've gotten up to 700 pounds on it. I mean, it, it can hold it. It's not crumbling by any means. Um, DIY completely. That's, and then back in here too, which is a junky shed right now because it's winter, but back in here you can see I have this little white sled. This is a like a prowler sled, so you can push sled for conditioning. Um, that was made out of an old hitch for a 70s pickup truck that I got for free. Not the pickup truck, I got the hitch for free. Um, that was just junk. And I was able just to weld uprights on it. I just throw weight plates on there and push it. Conditioning tool, that's probably several hundred dollars if you buy it new. And I just made it for free, pretty much. All right, let's head back to the garage. Talk about a couple more strongman pieces here. And if you guys are interested in the strongman stuff, you can turn off the video here. That's the, the list besides from the strongman equipment. I get excited about this stuff. Other stuff I've DIY'd is over here in this corner. Um, a strongman log. This is a old telephone pole. They removed a series of telephone poles um, or I guess they'd be electric poles down in our area. And I was able to commandeer one and chop off the ends, bolt on some metal and carve out with a chainsaw little hand holes there, which I wish I would have made a video on as I did it. DIY strongman log. I mean, it's a log, you know, you don't have to buy a fancy metal log. It does, it does what it does and it does it well. This is the thing that I did buy though, which is a Titan fitness, um, Atlas stone, metal Atlas stone, just cause I didn't want rocks sitting everywhere, I guess. So I did shell out the money on that for strongman training. Other DIY things here before we head inside to conclude is my barbells, right? I got Another barbell that I mentioned I have sitting out here from Marketplace, you know, maybe $100 for the weight set. An axle bar, which is just a two inch thick piece of metal that I found and put some clamps on there for an axle bar. I got farmer's walk bars here, which are the same bar as this, just a little shorter with handles bolted on. And this stuff doesn't have to be pretty, guys. That's the thing. And then over here, too, um, down in this corner, you see that old sandbag sitting there which is just a military duffel filled with sand. I have three of those. So a hundred pound, 150 and 200 pound sandbag. Those bags were $10 a piece at the military surplus store. Sand is whatever sand costs, not very much. And that's the stuff guys. The truth is you don't have to spend a lot of money in your gym if you are resourceful. Hopefully this video does kind of tell you things you should and shouldn't spend money on though, because you can't go cheap and DIY on absolutely everything. I've made plenty of mistakes and learned way too many lessons building out multiple home gyms in different places that I've had. Uh, so hopefully this advice helps you. Hopefully it earns a subscription to the channel. If you like the home gym content, this video helped you kind of decide some things to buy, go subscribe. And that'll be it for another one, everybody. Thank you for watching. Take it easy. Peace.